get a little strength for your own journey and let every devil and demon out of hell know that there's nothing, absolutely nothing that they can do to stop you from going where God wants you to go. Your destiny is not in the hands of your enemy, but your destiny is in the hand of the God who's going to give you strength today. Get those hands up and say, now is my time to make a move. Say it. Say it. Say it. Let's work it out. Make a move, honey. Sit, sit. Let's work it out. Make a move. Yes, Lord. Don't you worry about me. I got time to get it done. The book of Numbers sets up for us <laughs> the journeys of the children of Israel. It is their story of how they move from one place or one destination to another. Very quickly, because I don't have a whole lot of time, I certainly don't want you to leave me today. <laughs> but by way of introduction, you do understand that they had to move from one direction, from one destination to another. The book of Numbers then is their story of how they depart from a land of bondage into a land of promise. It is their departure to a better place. <laughs> It is during this journey, during this book of Numbers, that God makes them certain promises. Yes, yes. He, he says to them, I'm going to give you miracles as you journey. Not only am I going to give you miracles, your journey in and of itself will be miraculous. <laughs> you do know God can strategically order your steps. So that what appears to be something that should destroy you, in essence, when God gets through with it, that that was supposed to cause you to go in a wrong direction, ultimately becomes that vehicle that God uses to transport you to a blessing. <laughs> only thing that God required of them was total obedience. And in that he meant for them to obey him fully. He meant for them to obey in every aspect of the journey. To obey, number one, their leaders. Let me hasten on. They were to obey the leadership. And to obey the leadership, not like we do, but without question. They were not to aggravate, frustrate, or depress the leadership. <laughs> not only were they to be obedient to leadership, but they were also to be obedient to every ordinance and standard feast or festival that God would set up. Disobedience would not be tolerated at any level. And let me just park here for a moment, even though it's not on the manuscript or in the manuscript. God is not going to keep on tolerating disobedient behavior. Now, now, if tithing is what God set in place, and we have to talk about this because so many of you are not tithing. If that is what leadership has set in place, that is not an option for you to do or not to do. Not only has a leadership set it in place, but leadership has set it in place because God set it in place. They were to obey God and obey leadership. They were to obey every aspect of God's command to them. Now, movements, they were to move. They were to, to move. They were to go from one level, one destination, one dimension to another. Now, this becomes quite tedious for Moses and Aaron and others in leadership simply because we're talking about well over a half million people well over a half a million people now how in the world were they to get from one destination to another <laughs> and how would they do that successfully because there are moves and movements that will bring you to destinations, but they will not always bring you to a successful end. <laughs> Somebody is involved in movement now. 
but it's not going to be good for you. God, God, God would get them to where they needed to be. God would not tell them or get them ready to leave Egypt without having something specific in mind. If God has spoken to you about relocating areas in your life, then be of assured God already has a plan by which he intends for you to institute to get it done. That's true for you and that's true for me. God does not give commands. God does not give suggestions without having already set up some strategic points of movement to get you from one place or one destination to another. If God says, time up, <laughs> it's time to move. And no matter how comfortable you may be, no matter how good or how great that particular spot or place may be, if God says, time up, then your time there is up. He has another something in mind for you. God is also a God of order. Make no mistake about it. With that many people to get from one place to another, there must be an orderly process, an orderly procedure from which the Israelites must migrate from Egypt to their promises. In other words, God has to have in place mm -hmm, some orderly paths to which you are to proceed, some procedures that you are to follow. Now, that's... A point of scrutiny there is a process mm -hmm, by which believers proceed from one place in God to the next but let's park it for a moment there is a procedure mm -hmm, by which believers go from one degree of maturity and growth in God to another God does not expect you to suddenly arrive at any place that he wants you to be. He will strategically get you there. And he has a process and a procedure by which he intends for you to follow. You do not chart out and journey on your own course. You do not decide which road you will walk in next. If you are under the auspices of God Almighty, if you call him your Lord and Master, then you must lean not to your own understandings, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and God will direct your path. He does have a procedure and a process that he wants you to follow and be a part of. Hmm. That was the first challenge that Moses faced. Moses must now hear God and hear God clearly in order to get over half a million people from one place to another in some kind of orderly fashion. In order to do that, they must first walk by what they see. Very quickly, God set up for them ten plagues, ten signs, ten symbols in Egypt. Y'all know this Bible class 101. The water turned to blood, the flies, the frogs, the locusts. Y'all know this? Anybody been to CBI 101? And lastly, a deaf Muriel went through the land, killing the firstborn of all the Egyptians. Ten things they could see. God allowed them to see his miraculous power. Once God puts you in a position where you can visibly see the hand of God, then it's easier to follow God to the next move, to see. Somebody say, to see. A cloud then, a cloud, a cloud, a cloud then uh, was placed in the air uh, to guide them by day, something they could Thank you. A pillow of fire was formed at night to guide the camp at night as they journeyed toward the promised land. Something they could. My, my. There was ongoing movement so that Israel was never to be stagnated in one place. Too many of you today have become stagnated. And God is going to give you opportunity today to make to make a move.